Mama Mavis, oh mama, they try my patience. I've loved Gorillaz for their approach to combining genres and being extremely forward thinking, creative and personality filled. Damon Albarn has shown that outside of his Blur days, he has been a brilliant mind behind some of the most iconic pop songs of the last decade. Feel Good Inc, Tomorrow Comes Today, Clint Eastwood, Stylo, they drew people in with their self-titled, won everyone over with Demon Days, and, and became more conceptual and colourful with Plastic Beach. Not everyone was a fan of the fall, I kinda liked it. But Humans is here, the new release. It has been a polarising run with this album. For one, this thing is extremely ambitious, it is the, like, in terms of how many tracks it has, it is the biggest album yet. The deluxe edition has 26 tracks, and it's also got the largest amount of guest features too. This thing goes big and shoots for the stars. And does it get to those stars? I don't think so. This thing is really disjointed. It tries to seem conceptual with the interludes, but it really just, it doesn't hit that mark. And I think one of the reasons for that is because a lot of the focus is on the guest features. It feels less like a Gorillaz release and more like a compilation of songs with Gorillaz-esque production, but mostly the guest features take the reign here. Of course on this album you hear the Gorillaz members, 2D and such, like on Satin's Bars or We Got The Power or Ascension. But even on those tracks, but even on some of those those tracks, most of the presence is taken up by the vocal guest features. And it's not like Plastic Beach where there were a lot of guest features, but it kind of felt like each of those guest features had their own story to contribute to the overall world of the album. It kind of felt like they were portraying their own characters. Whereas on here, like for example, the Kalela and Danny Brown track kind of feels like a Kalela song with a Danny Brown feature. Granted, there are some vocal guest features that absolutely do portray a fantastic character. Like, even though I don't think the track Moments with De La Soul is the best on here, I still think that they bring, they always have brought a lot of character to Gorilla's songs. A cartoony gang, just having a lot of fun, goofing off, and while, while they have a little joy ride on the motorway. And then Grace Jones on the track Charger sounds ghoulish. However, the blaring guitars that pop all over the entire track just kind of overpowers the whole thing. Some vocal features barely get any presence at all. I could barely identify Dram on the track Andromeda, which might sound spacey and vast and kind of groovy, but it kind of underwhelms by doing nothing with this atmosphere. It's not like a track like on Demon Days with Last Living Souls, where there was a subtle progression with the beat, bringing in pianos and an acoustic guitar and even some strings. I'm comparing songs from Humans to previous Gorillaz songs because there are moments where I think the music misses the mark in areas where previous albums or songs from Gorillaz had nailed those things a lot better. Busted in Blue is an incredibly uneventful slow jam. You have a track like Strobe Light which has a really nice electro house influence but uh, it, it, again, it does nothing with it. The track Ascension was pretty exciting, I love the Vince Staple verses, and although they are extremely fun in the first verse, the second verse gets pretty dark. You get Satin's Bars, which again sounds very spacey and kind of intergalactic. And I do think that this song has grown on me a lot with Pop Can's feature taking the reign over 2D's presence. But, you know, it's catchy, it's very wild, and, um, all my life! Going back to the track Moments featuring De La Soul, um, this thing kind of feels very mechanical and robotic and kind of stiff. I don't know, there's just something about it that I can't really get into. It might be how loud and overpowering and overbearing the sound of that snare is. I did like the track Carnival though. It kind of does sound like a very dark merry-go-round carousel sort of thing where you're just spinning around and around and around. Let Me Out was also a banger too. Probably one of the more consistent tracks on here and very enjoyable considering the hook. Um, the final track on here, We Got The Power. I actually liked it a lot. I love how it was this thrilling, uplifting moment to end the album on. I'm still ambivalent about Jenny Beth being on this track. I think her vocal style is a little out of place considering the general mood, the uplifting, heavenly mood of this thing. But once it kicks into the chorus with the rush of strings and everything going on, it, it becomes so much better. It It's like a plane taking off. It's a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful moment. 
And I will conclude this review by talking about Hallelujah Money, a track which, despite the random Spongebob sample at the end, I always thought it was a song that would have really fit onto Plastic Beach. Like, you'll, you'll get the electronic beat, but you'll also hear like uh, Benjamin Clementine's soulful vocals as well as the gospel choir which I thought was a beautiful choice to bring in during the final moments of the track. There was also kind of a haunting poignancy to it as well. I don't really think this track was that weak, I actually think it was one of the better ones on here and considering that like this album is full of pretty weak tracks, it's not a big competition. So yeah, I do think this album was incredibly inconsistent and bloated. You know, there are like a couple of highlights here and there but again, I don't really think this was um, that good um, in hindsight, 5 out of 10.